Hello everybody, this is Aaron from the Sibling Rivalry channel, and today we're going to do the long-awaited follow-up to the Artillery Sidewinder X1. A machine that can make copies of almost anything. Like I said, this is the follow-up to the uh, initial, I guess, unboxing and assembly of the Sidewinder X1 by Artillery or Evnovo, depending on where you're buying it. Um, yeah, this printer has been awesome. You can see that it's got some dust on it, and I'm just kind of being realizing how much dust is on it now that I'm looking at it up close. Um, <laughs> it's been running pretty much non-stop since I've got it. Uh, there was like maybe three days that it didn't run. Um, and it's been great. So I did do a few modifications uh, and I'll go over that. And there were a few shortcomings that I'll also go over as well. Uh, what I want to start out with would be like your base out of the box experience. So I kept this with the stock firmware as long as I could. Uh, unfortunately, there are some shortcomings with the stock firmware. It doesn't have a Z offset adjustment for like Z baby steps for moving the Z axis home up and down. That's been a bit of a problem. Uh, that was a, a big problem actually at the start. I tried setting this up with a uh, BL touch and uh, well, it was a BL touch knockoff because I couldn't afford a real BL touch probe for auto bed leveling. Um, so I guess that goes into the modifications that I attempted. Uh, so you can see the mount here that I actually initially got for that. Uh, this is like a sliding mount that you can adjust. I think Michael over on uh, Teaching Tech uh, designed this and shared the design and I downloaded it. I actually kept it on here because I had another use for it. Out of the box, the experience was really great. The only problem I ever really had was leveling. And with a bed this big, it's hard to get it perfectly leveled. You could get it almost perfectly leveled and you'd get a certain area that works perfect. But as soon as you get to one of the outer edges, the print starts to peel up and then you have a failed print or you have something that just kind of comes unstuck. Uh, the bed was a little tricky to get used to because it's not really a regular glass bed like some people are saying. Uh, I have the version four to my understanding, which has the, uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called, Ultra Base. It's like an Ultra Base equivalent. It's not actually real Ultra Base, but it's essentially a uh, laminated glass and it has this mesh on top of it, similar to what you'd see on the top of a, uh, like the sun guard on a windshield. So it has that and the way that it works is the, when it's warm, the surface becomes somewhat porous and the plastic sticks to it like crazy. And then once it cools, in theory, it cools down and constricts and the part just pops right off. Um, in practice, it's not that perfect. It has taken a bit of practice and trial and error to get it to work perfectly. And part of that was getting that Z offset set perfectly. Um, there's also some weird adhesion problems and cleaning problems. So eventually you will need to clean the bed it's not really a big issue with uh, like hand grease or like oils off your hands too much. I don't really have very oily hands. My hands tend to be very dry most of the time. Um, but you do need to clean it to kind of keep the little bits of plastic that are left over. And there's like a little film that kind of gets left over from prints, especially if you remove the print before it's a, like completely cooled and popped off on its own. You'll actually hear a crack and that'll be the sign that the, the print has come unstuck. Um, if you remove it before that, it leaves a film and it actually leaves a bit of a film regardless. I followed along on, uh, some, on uh, some forums and the Facebook pages for the artillery printers and people were going on about using all these different chemicals to clean it. Part of the problem is there are so many different subversions of this. There's the initial release that a lot of people seem to have, and there's everything up to the V4, which seems to be the final working release that they've got now, which I was lucky enough to get. But the bed is different for each of them. Some of them you can clean with ammonia, so like you could use uh, Bonami or 
uh, like, an, like Windex or something to clean it. I tried that. It actually left streaks all over my bed. I tried hydrogen peroxide because some people suggested that. The only thing that worked for me, oh, I even tried acetone, but that actually left a really nasty streak. It actually dissolved some of the, uh, the plastic on top of it, I noticed. Uh, the only thing that worked for me was rubbing alcohol, which uh, is very hard to come by. So I've actually used hand sanitizer a few times, and we've got some whiteboard spray that I use that has, it's essentially uh, denatured alcohol. Um, so it's effectively just rubbing alcohol that doesn't do all the same stuff that rubbing alcohol does. But I just put it on with a paper towel or something like that and rub it around and I try to have the bed warm when I'm doing that and it just picks up everything that come like all the nasty stuff and leaves the bed like perfectly clean. Um, other than that there were some issues with the filament runout sensor. The wiring here seems to be loose in some way. I haven't quite narrowed down where the issue is, whether it's actually on the connector here or further down, because um, like the wire actually goes and follows along through the aluminum channels here all the way down to the main board. Um, but my fix for that, unless I'm printing near the end of a spool, if I'm printing anything large, I just take a piece of broken off filament and feed it through the sensor here so that it doesn't move. I notice that when it, you're doing a long print, after enough time, it'll randomly pause. It'll kind of think that there's a filament run out and it'll pause or it'll actually think that there's a full filament run out and stop and start screaming. It's got a little beeper in here so it screeches at you every two seconds, I think. Um, just so in case you're wondering, I uh, because this is a big printer, I named it Bertha. That's why this is here. So I like to name all my machines. Um, like literally all my machines, my computers got a name, everything. But other than that, the out of the box experience has been great. I did end up having to update the firmware on here. I found a version of it on Thingiverse that was being shared around and I'll share that in the links down below, um, like in the description. I essentially just updated the LCD and updated the firmware. It was a little tricky to get the firmware updated. You do have to open up the printer, unfortunately, to disconnect the LCD from the main board, because otherwise the uh, when you try to upload the firmware, it doesn't know which board it's trying to communicate with because they're sharing a serial port. Um, but yeah, uh, I print with USB, and I know Joel over at 3D Printing Nerd had some issues with the USB, and I've actually had similar issues where it just randomly will either move the extruder to a random spot on the first layer and then move back, or it'll actually just clip the first layer and draw a line from point A to point B. So like from, it'll get halfway through that uh, G-code for the first layer, and then it'll just draw a line through the middle of the print with the extruder still running. And uh, yeah, it's weird how it does that. But uh, from what I've been told, all I need to do is format this USB drive. I've tried it with another USB drive and it works. I just keep this guy with the printer because it's kind of like the dedicated one for the printer. I also have an SD card here that works as well. Um, it's just a one gig card that I grabbed from somewhere. This has the updated LCD firmware on there and you can load files on it through that as well. I just keep it in there in case, you know, I'm printing off the USB and I need to load a new file onto the printer for the next thing in the queue, then I'll pop out the SD card, go run over to the computer, load the file on there, and then I can go through the menu here and select which file system or which directory I wanna use, whether I wanna use a USB or SD. Um, yeah. So other than that, uh, the only real modification that I did was adding this clip and I attempted to do the auto bed leveling with the BL Touch clone. It didn't work for me. There was a whole bunch of problems with the BL Touch clone and I ended up sending it back. I bought it through Amazon, so it was pretty straightforward. Um, but what I actually ended up doing instead, which you might know from my, I did a KP3 video with this, previously, now, um, 
I took the, I bought a dial indicator off Amazon and it just so happens that the dial indicator has a mount thing on the back. It's like a little uh, nub that sticks out and it fits perfectly in here. So I just popped it in there and I went around the bed and I leveled everything perfectly, similar to how I did in the uh, KP3 video, if you've seen that. We'll have that linked probably up here. Um, but yeah, I did that and since I've done that, the printer has been printing perfectly. I've literally, other than a, a, like weird filament issues, there's certain brands of filament now that there's filament shortages here in Canada um, that I've tried to see if like maybe this brand will work. I try those brands and there's weird issues and I adjust settings on the printer, which then I go back and have weird issues with the filaments that I know and love. Um, but other than that, like the levelness has not been an issue. It's just having that Z offset for the first layer calibrated properly. But other than that, I guess that about covers uh, everything from my first three months almost having this printer. Um, yeah, honestly, I, I actually have another one in the mail <laughs> that's coming in the next few days. So Hopefully that arrives and I don't have to pay any like heavy duty on it. I did buy it through Amazon, but it's apparently shipping from Hong Kong, so we'll see. Um, and maybe we'll do a video on that if it's a different version of it. And yeah, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. If you enjoyed the video and found anything here informative or have any questions about what I talked about, I know I kind of rambled a bit. Um, sorry about that. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Uh, it lets us know that you want to see more content like this. If you didn't like the video because it's not up your alley, let us know and we'll take that into consideration as well. We've got thick skins. We can handle some criticism. Um, yeah, if you're not subscribed, maybe check out subscribing. We've got all sorts of different content. We've got... Uh, some Dark Souls and some Resident Evil 3 coming up, uh, continuing, and I'm getting good at Dark Souls, so check that out. Um, yeah, until next time, I hope you have a great day. Stay safe, wash your hands for 30 seconds uh, with soap and water, or use some, uh, I'm an electric hand sanitizer. <laughs> alcohol, <laughs> um, use some like alcohol-based hand sanitizer, and uh, yeah, stay safe out there. Bye for now.